Good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, this is Danielle, the Director of Marketing and Programs for the Brownsville Chamber of Commerce. Just to honor everyone's time, um, we will be starting. Uh, one last question and a reconfirmation. If you are able to hear me, please use the chat to let me know. Okay, I'm getting a lot of yeses. So for today's uh, webinar, we will have SBA here. Um, we have Angela Burden, the District Director for the SBA's Lower Rio Grande Valley District Office. She will be talking about the Paycheck Protection Program that just passed with the CARES Act. And she's going to go over um, everything that um, is in that program and how you can go ahead and uh, utilize that for your business. Now, just a couple of ground rules. Um, please use the chat to ask any questions to Angela. We will be asking her anything that comes in through the chat and you'll be hearing a live answer from her. Uh, again, you will get the presentation as well as any resources talked about during today's webinar. And we have everybody's email address so you don't have to post that on the chat. Angela, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Can everybody hear Angela? Yes, okay, so we'll, we'll be starting then. So I start? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Hello everyone, uh, how's everyone uh, out there in teleconference land? <laughs> uh, you know, we're. I really appreciate the fact that the uh, Brownsville Chamber has provided the opportunity for the SBA and myself to discuss the the variety of the loan programs that have been rolled out um, in a short uh, period of time. Uh, I do want to start the presentation with a quote by Walt Disney. It says, "Times and conditions change so rapidly that we must keep our aim constantly focused on the future." and and that's what I, I think about um, a lot of the um, rollout in the SBA programs um, that, yes, um, things may be a little bumpy along the way, but we're all learning um, together. I, I did include a um, sort of a timeline. And when we look at uh, from where we started, which was Friday, March 13th, to the National Emergency Declared, um, all the way up until last um, Friday, um, that has only been seven or 19 days. So, you know, the, the government has um, passed legislation and, and created rules and actually rolled out programs within actually a week. So, um, I, you know, this is lightning speed. If anyone knows um, how legislation is made, they know that um, this this was probably a, an unprecedented um, a rollout of, of a law. Today, I'm going to talk about the, uh, of the part of the CARES Act, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. <clears throat> so, Part of the CARES Act, there was $10 billion set aside for the SBA emergency grants up to $10,000 uh, for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance. And so $10 billion was set aside from that. $17 billion was uh, set aside to cover uh, six months of payments for small businesses with existing small business loans. So if you have an existing small business loan, we're going to pay your, your, your interest um, in principal. And then 100, the, the big elephant in the room is the $349 billion uh, for SBA loan guarantees, um, which included the uh, PPP, better known as the PPP, which is the Paycheck Performance Program. Okay, so beginning last Friday, which is April 3rd, small businesses and private nonprofits, which are 501c3s and Veterans organizations, 501c19s, as well as tribal business concerns were eligible to apply. Um, a new, another set of individuals, which I don't know the difference between um, sole proprietorship and an independent contractor, to me they're the same, but on, on uh, April 10th, 
the independent contractors will be able to apply. Um, eligible recipients can apply for a loan up to 10 million determined by eight weeks of prior average payroll plus an additional 25% of the amount. So what can the loan be used for? It can be used for, and this is why it's called Paycheck Protection Program. We want for the funds to be used to uh, put your folks to work, to bring them back, to pay them sick leave, whatever it takes to keep folks on, on a page, to keep folks receiving a paycheck. It can also be used though for mortgage interest, rent and utility costs during that eight week period. The, once the formula, you know, at the end, you're going to, there's going to be a formula and you, you'll have to pay back a certain percentage of it. So that percentage will have a 1% interest rate for uh, small businesses and nonprofits with a two year maturity. Um, it is 100% guaranteed by the SBA to the lender. So we're telling the lender, no matter what, we're guaranteeing the money that you're loaning. Um, there is no collateral, no personal guarantees, no borrower or lender fee. So if, if someone is charging you to do this, um, there's a problem. There shouldn't be anyone charging borrowers at all to um, either create the application or package the loan or anything like that. And then there's no payments for the first six months. Um, the application is, is short, it's two pages. Um, and then there's two pages of instructions, which are a lot of the disclaimers. But again, the lender, whoever you go to, because this, this particular program does not come directly from the SBA, you will have to go to an authorized 7A lender. Um, you will probably be asked for information from, for, from that lender to, to proceed with the application. The, again, the loan can be used for payroll costs, mortgage, interest, rent, utility costs. 75% uh, of the loan will be forgiven. So let's see, let's get a little bit more into the weeds here. Okay, again, I'm talking about what, and, that, and I keep stressing this because I don't want the, it's a paycheck protection program, so we want to make sure that this these funds go to to payroll. So, what can I use the loans for? Again, payroll costs, including benefits, interest on mortgage obligations incurred before February fifteenth, twenty twenty, rent under lease agreements enforced before February fifteenth, twenty twenty, and utilities, uh, which for which service began before February 15, 2020. So you're asking yourself, okay, what, what counts as payroll? So payroll is counted as salary, wages, commissions, or tips, and it is capped at 100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. It can also include employee benefits, including the cost of vacation, uh, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance, for separation or dismissal. Um, it could include health benefits, insurance premiums, and retirement benefits. State and local taxes assessed, assessed on the compensation. And then for, for, for sole proprietor or independent contractors, wages, commissions, income, or net earning from self-employment capped at 100,000. So basically anything wrapped around what your payroll costs are going to be which as you might not see are obviously your uh, federal income taxes for your employees so that will is not included um does the pay, ppp cover paid sick leave yes it does it does cover uh payroll since sick leave is part of your payroll cost yes okay so you're probably wondering how to calculate it. Okay, so loans can be for up to two months of your average monthly payroll cost from the last year. So you're looking at March 2019 to February 2020. Nope, let me clicking in on my phone. Uh, plus an 
an additional 25%. And that amount can be up to 10 million. So if we look at the, there's four different scenarios. Um, so the first scenario would be, you have no employees that make more than 100,000. So your annual payroll costs would be, could be maybe 120,000. You're gonna average that out. So you're gonna divide it by 12. So that's $10,000 a month for payroll. You're gonna multiply that by 2.5, which becomes 25,000. So your maximum loan amount would be 25,000. That is no employees that make more than 100,000. So if you have, if you have an employee that might make or two or three employees that make more than a hundred thousand, you would take your annual uh, payroll. In this case, in this example, it's one million five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand dollars. You would subtract out the what we're claiming is there's two employees making one hundred fifty thousand, so you subtract out three hundred thousand. So your annual payroll would be one thousand. I mean, excuse me, one million two hundred thousand. If you would divide that by 12, you'd get 100,000, which is an average monthly payroll. You'd multiply that by 2.5, 2 which would be 250,000, and your maximum loan amount would be 250,000. Does anybody, does everybody kind of get the idea behind it? But yes, yes in the chat. If I've thoroughly confused you, you can put yes in the chat too. <laughs> We're getting yeses. Okay. <clears throat> and I believe that's yes, they do understand. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll move along. What I've done here is created uh, questions and answers uh, because these are uh, frequently asked questions. So I'll just go through these real quick and you may have this question. Uh, so where can I apply for the Paycheck Protection Program? You can apply through a, a 7A lender. There is a uh, website that you can enter in your zip code and it will give you the closest lender to you um, that is actually participating in the Paycheck Protection Program. I encourage folks to go to their current lender and ask them if they're participating in the program. Most of the lenders down here are. Uh, the second question, can I ap apply for more than one Paycheck Protection Program uh, loan? No, you can only apply for PPP once. Can I apply for the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan? The answer is yes. However, you may not double dip. You cannot use both loans for payroll costs. In other words, you have to be very careful about um, how you use the proceeds. Obviously, for the uh, PPP, you want to make sure you use it uh, for all of your payroll and maybe use the economic injury disaster loan for other expenses that you may have incurred during the month. Um, question, what do I need to apply? Well, you need to complete the Paycheck Protection Program loan application and you will need to provide your lender with payroll documentation. Your lender may also ask you for additional identification and corporate or business documents. So, um, you know, you need to treat this as if it were an actual loan. If you're going to the bank, they're gonna ask you for specific documents that they're gonna need. Um, so be available to, to be able to produce those documents. <clears throat> Okay, here's a question I get quite a bit. Do independent contractors count as employees for purposes of PPP loan calculations? The answer is no. Independent contractors can apply for PPP loans on their own, so they do not count for purposes of a borrower's PPP loan calculation. Question, are faith-based organizations, including houses of worship, eligible to receive SBA loans under the PPP and the EIDL or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program? The answer is yes. And additionally, uh, we additionally clarified that faith-based organizations are eligible to receive SBA loans regardless of whether they provide secular social services. 
So at the beginning, uh, there was it was not clear, and so normally a religious organization would not be um, eligible. But in in the event that they were providing, uh, say, childcare or homeless shelter or something like that, but um, that has been clarified that yes, um, faith-based organizations can apply for either the uh, PPP or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Question, can my PPP loan be forgiven in whole or in part? The answer is yes, the amount of the loan forgiveness, forgiveness can be up to the full principal amount of the loan and any accrued interest. That is, the borrower will not be responsible for any loan payment if the borrower uses all of the loan proceeds for forgivable purposes i.e. employee and compensation levels are maintained. Okay. Once you've, you've gone to the bank or your lender, the 7A lender that's going to do your PPP loan, um, then once you, know, you get your loan and you put your folks back to work for those eight weeks, um, then you're wondering, okay, so how do I, how do I request forgiveness? So what you do is you go back to that lender, that a borrower will submit the request to the lender that is servicing the loan. The request will include documents that verify the number of full-time equivalent employees and pay rates, as well as the payments on eligible mortgage lease and utility obligations. The borrower, that's you folks, must certify that the documents are true and that you use the forgiveness amount to keep employees and make eligible mortgage interest rates, interest, rent, and utility payments. The lender must decide on the forgiveness within 60 days. Okay, so how is this calculated? Um, and it, it I imagine probably there's going to be some sort of a uh, some sort of a tool that will help calculate. This, these are going to be rough calculations right now. But so what you would do is you take your average monthly payroll cost number that we used in the original um, loan amount. Okay. So you take your average monthly payroll cost number used to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program loan, multiply, multiply by the average number of full-time equivalent employees per month for the eight-week period beginning on the date of the loan origination. So this begins, the loan origination, when you close on your loan is when your eight-week period starts, okay? Then you would divide it by the average number of full-time equivalent employees per month from February 15th, 2019 to June 30th, 2019. Okay. Or January 1st, 2020 to February 15th, 2020. So as an example, if your average monthly payroll cost was 50,000 and you have 10 full-time equivalent employees per month, on average during the eight weeks, you received the PP loan and you had an average of 12 FPs per month last year between February 15, 2019 and June 30, 2019, the math would be $50,000 times 10, because you've got 10 employees, divided by 12, that would equal 41,666, which is 83.33% of the $50,000. So that means you would take the 83% would be the amount that you spent on payroll costs, which would be your forgiven amount. Um, I have it here on a on the slide, so you'll be able to see it once once the um, once you all get a copy of the slide. Um, any questions on that? We do have a couple of questions so far. I don't know if you want to take those right now or okay. afterwards. Yeah, we can take them now. Okay, so I have a question um, that's saying if this particular program is for the tax year 2018 or 2019, if they're self-employed or from the current quarter. So when you're calculating your FTEs, you're gonna take 
from February 15th, 2019. You're gonna, it's gonna reflect this time last year. So 215, 2000. There's also a couple of questions on how this program works in particular to sole proprietorships. Mm -hmm. So folks that don't have a, an employee or? Yeah, they're, it's just themselves. Okay, you would just, depending on how much you would make, you would do the same thing, the same calculation. A little bit of an issue there. Yes, um, yes, I, a business that has a payroll less than 20,000 um, is, would be uh, eligible. And um, they're asking if they use gross sales, net sales, or net income. Okay, there would be no, there's no sales associated with this particular program. In the economic injury disaster loan, we are looking at, at sales, but in this case, we're only looking at um, your pay, your payroll. Okay. Mm. We have another question that states, um, if I have a tech and pay with 1099, you're saying you can add to payroll for PPP? Um. So if your tech is being paid with a 1099, they're technically not your employee. They're, they're a contract worker. So they would be able to apply themselves, but you should not add them to okay. your your uh, relation. Now they're saying if they move the employees to part-time basis, can they still apply for PPP? They can, but um, what will happen is the amount of the of the um, the forgiveness will be dropped, and they'll owe more on the loan. The the idea is to get folks whole again, to put them back where they were before. Um, if, if you may have laid them off or whatever it may be. We want to get as many folks back to work making their full amounts um, as, as quickly as possible. Does this apply to businesses that have been in business less than six months? Yes. You, you can apply if you've been in business less in six months. You're gonna look at your payroll amounts from uh, the time frame that you've been in, your your average payroll amount. So I believe some of these questions have already been answered. Um, for example, 12 instructors on contract for 1099 and one part-time staff member um, they're asking if all 13 will be included uh, as part of the payroll calculation. But it will only be that one part-time. Yeah, the, the instructors are considered, again, if you're paying them with a 1099, they're not technically your, your employee, um, but they can also apply if they wish. The one-time part-time employee would be what you would use on your calculation. Another question is, uh, what happens to an employee costs for those who make more than a hundred thousand? Well, those are those are um, subtracted out of the original calculation. I don't know what, mm -hmm. I don't know why that calculation is like that, but um, that's the way that's the way it's calculated. Yeah. So if you had, say you had, um, for an example, if you had an annual payroll of one million five hundred and you had two employees that made one hundred and fifty thousand each, that'd be three hundred thousand. You'd have to subtract that out from your one one million five hundred, and your calculations would be at one. 
million three hundred or no two hundred one million two hundred mm -hmm. now if a person has two unrelated businesses can they apply for each business yes uh, but then we then there would have to be affiliation we'd have to look at affiliation rules but yes you could Does this program um, benefit nonprofits like 501c12? Um, not this particular program. I think it's 501c3s and 501c19s, um, not the 501c12. Um, however, 501c corporations can apply for the economic injury disaster loan, which is a different product. Now, if a, a child care center is close to the public for service, but they're still delivering food to the students' homes, does that apply uh, for this program? Um, if they're, if you have folks on staff and you're paying them as if they were in normal operating, um, you know, business, then yes. the the work that they're doing the fact that they're your employee is one thing but the work that you're assigning them to do is is something else so mm -hmm. if you have them employed whether they're taking care of children or now delivering food they're still employed Yes, you would have to, if you have multiple businesses, you would have to apply separately. Yeah, if, and also, I mean, think about, are you filing uh, income tax uh, for them separately? If anybody has any questions, please use the chat. We're asking for a clarification on employees who make over 100,000. Um, if you have two employees who make 150, do you subtract 300,000 or 100,000? You subtract the total amount of those employees. So if they're both making 150,000, then you would subtract out 300,000. You will be receiving this uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. Now, I don't know that they're mm -hmm. still looking at credit. Um, it's really up to the institution, but because there is a 100% guarantee by the, the federal government, the SBA, um, I think that the, they're looking at, in other words, if they make the loan to you, and for some reason you default the bank is still going to receive their money from the sba but then the sba will turn around or the federal government will turn around and and look for you to make the loan whole um and that's kind of how uh, federal guarantees work so you know they may look at your credit but in, then again the lender really is 100 percent protected I don't know, um, I see you're referring to the link of providers, um, but it's really, we are not requiring the lenders to have a portal, it's really up to them. Um, they, you know, there is the paper application. Um, you can uh, use, you know, normally they would use that, but they may have additional uh, documentation. So I do not know which lenders um, have a, a portal up or what if they're requiring folks to use the portal. Now, banks that aren't lenders, can they apply to, to become lenders or um, how does that work? 
yes, I think beginning Friday, there's a opportunity for non SBA, uh, SBA lenders that don't have a, a 750, what we call a 750 agreement with us, um, uh, can begin to apply to become a, uh, a, a not an authorized, uh, lender. Does an employee that uh, has a W-2 uh, apply for this program, or are they, or if they're classified as self-employed? A W-2 is uh, would be a someone that is employed by someone, so their employer would would have to apply. Um, I don't know if many of you have the opportunity to view, but I did put a a the top copy of the Patriot Protection Program application, the borrower application, so you can see um, what it looks like. It is asking, you know, what type of business you may be, your legal name, your address, um, your EIN number, phone email address, primary contact, and then it shows you the average monthly payroll, you're gonna put whatever it might be, and then you multiply it by 2.5. And then it's asking you, what what are what is the purpose of your loan? Is it payroll, lease, mortgage, utility, other? But one of the things I really uh, want to talk to everyone about or just to let them know is this is sort of a um, a good faith type of application the lenders are trying to make uh, good faith decisions and it's really going to be on the back of the borrowers to make sure that they're answering the questions correctly and they're being honest um, with the with the lender um, you know you're going to be asked questions um, about you know if you're a felon or if you've been in trouble um where your place of residence is where your employees um their place of residence they're not going to ask you to give um their information but they're going to ask you yes or no questions is the applicant a franchise um things like that and then there's a certification on the second page and and that is where i want everybody to make sure and read um, because again we're we're going since this is such a rapid program we're going on good faith so you know we want to make sure that we're being as as truthful as we can and that we are certifying all the things that we're saying are true or not true Okay, there on I can give you the address. How do you know if a franchise is listed in the SBA directory? I can give you or give anyone a copy of the link that goes to the SBA franchise directory. I understand it can be for lease. Can it be a lease for a building currently or an office space? It, it can be where, a lease for wherever you're doing business out of. If you require an office, it's an office. If you require the whole building, it's the whole building. You're welcome. One question here is, uh, can the lenders deny the PPP for any reason if it is a SBA guarantee? That's a good question. Um, uh, I suppose they could. <laughs> I don't know that anyone is, but if your lender is uncomfortable with doing the loan, then 
you know, my best advice would be go try f to to go to a different lender. Maybe they they'll look at it. Uh, you know, there what you know if you're if you're approaching the lender and you have all your documentation in order, most of your payroll documents, and you're basically saying this is my average monthly payroll. I want to keep my folks working or at least paying them. Um, and so if you have that documentation, there shouldn't be a problem because this is a this this program is to make sure that we keep our folks um, paid and, and working, being able to pay their bills and things like that. Is there a disbursement timeline for the for the PPP? Like once you're approved through the lender? Um, normally, the lender should, once you're, you know, approved, they should disperse as quickly as possible. Now, all of this, this funding is through June 30th, so we're on a very short timeline. Um, I mean, you could, um, you know, put your employees back to work on June 1st and you can go through the June 30th, and then after that, ask for the, the forgiveness, but. Again, we're on a short timeline, and I and I truly believe that lenders are trying to um, trying to crank the funding out as quickly as possible because that's the whole idea behind the PPP program. I don't have a, a timeline though to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Do part-time employees count under the PPP, or is it only full-time? Um, I think I believe. Uh, Part-time count because they're part of your payroll expense, right? So, you know, I guess two part-times would equal one full-time. But when you're when you're calculating your payroll expense, obviously they're going to be included. Now, another question here is: uh, when you're ready to apply for forgiveness as an independent contractor slash sole proprietor, what proof would you be able to provide that they're paying themselves? Um, the, the funds would be deposited to the account, and would we go with the formality of needing to write ourselves a check? I would. I would do that just to um, just to make things nice and clean. Um, it will be easier in the long run when you're trying to calculate and get your forgiveness. Um, I think that would be the uh, proper thing to do. Again, I would ask your lender though whoever you're whoever you're getting your uh, loan through I would really talk to them because each particular lender may be different they have their own autonomy um, on how they'd like to see things or I mean all the calculations and everything is the same it's just that they you know one thing might be easier for one lender than another This question is stating, how does all this apply to musical entertainment, such as DJs, musical groups, who have a place that they entertain at every week of the year? <laughs> well, I, I guess you would look at your total cost of, um, I mean, the 1099s. Um, I don't, you know, I think yours is a little bit difficult to calculate because I, I'm assuming you probably get paid by cash. You know, I'd have to, whoever, that, that's a hard one to answer. I would have to defer that to the lender um, to see what they would suggest when calculating. You know, it's kind of difficult if there's no proof um, when you're, you know, when you're looking at things. I've actually had people call and say, oh, I've got, you know, 80 people I'm, paying on somebody else's, um, believe it or not, uh, social security number, can we apply it? It's like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there a cap for the lenders on how much money they're able to give these small businesses as a whole? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've seen things where they're talking about regulations and things like that, um, but it's my understanding that there is not a cap. Now, for each small business, there is a cap of $10 million, but, at, but as a lending institution, I'm not aware of a cap 
um, but I have seen information about regulators and things like that. Um, but, you know, because it's guaranteed, you know, I don't think it goes against their lending because it's since the loans are guaranteed by the, the federal government 100%. Now back to the DJ's question, they're saying that their checks um, and 1099s are involved. Okay, well I would use those, you know, use the checks and the 1099s. I mean, you're you're technically calculating a gross income or a gross payroll, so what would your gross payroll be uh, utilizing those pieces of documents? Again, I would refer to, to the lender to see how he wants to handle that or she. You know, you gotta remember you're looking at an average, because I, I don't know if DJs are more, are busier or music folks are busier at certain times in the year, um, but you're kind of, you kind of need to do an average of what you're making through, you know, throughout the years, what, what they're going to look at. Well, my, my phone number is 956. Uh, I'll give you my mobile cell. It's 956-793-0224. And my email address is Angela.Burton at sba.gov um, and then also there's a, a quite a bit of information um, on the department of treasury's website um, that actually has the uh, the borrower application it has information um, to the borrower it also has lender information um, and some q a so if anyone's interested you can always go to the uh, the treasury department which is I think it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash treasury, no, home.treasury.gov. And um, that will take you to a page that will provide all kinds of information too. One Thank question. you, Sergio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One question that just came in is, does this include temp health companies that they pay? Um, temp companies, wow, that would be a, I, did that come from Mighty Bill? No. <laughs> um, I guess it would depend on the, you know, number of employees that they actually have. Um, I don't know, that's a good question. I'll have to look that one up. Um, I don't know on um, that one. I don't know because I know that obviously folks are employed by them to provide services for someone else, but they're getting paid for that. I don't know. Um, I'd have to look look that up to be honest. I think that there's a lot of questions and there's some gray areas, um, but I think the fact that you know the federal government and our legislators were trying to get this relief out there so quickly that obviously there were probably some things that were left a little bit gray. And so, you know, I do appreciate everyone's patience. Um, but when you think about how the legislation was rolled out and how quickly it's hit the streets, it's, um, it's a, you know, I, I don't know, I just, it's crazy. And yeah. so I do appreciate everyone's um, support and patience and we're trying the SBA and even locally your your lower Rio Grande Valley district is trying and we're working as hard as we can to make sure that the information is getting out there and that folks are are able to utilize the different programs person is looking for clarification. Um, if they're a single member LLC uh, and their 1099 show 80,000, that's what they use? Yep. 80,000 divided by 12. 
one question. Uh, what if we apply and our districts do not renew our contracts for next year, what happens? Um, is this from an educator or? I believe so. Okay. Well, it, you know, it's okay because we're, again, we're only looking at this two month period up to, I mean, I don't know until when your contract is, but um, we're looking at up to June 30th and that's, you know, the farthest this is going to go. Uh, how do you treat guaranteed payments to partners in a partnership? Is this compensation eligible? That's a great question, and I do not have the answer. I think um, again, we'd have to rely on our on our lenders to see how they would want to address that. I guess if they're are they receiving what what is the documentation that we're they're receiving? Um, on this compensation, I guess we, how are they showing that they're receiving this compensation? Are they showing as an employee or or other K one from the partnership? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So K one, I you know I'm not a I can't say I don't know I'm not a, a tax <laughs> attorney I don't know that would be I would have to look up that question or at least get some guidance from a lender and see how they'd want to handle it. But I think if if they're not considered an employee, again, we're looking at getting employees back to work. And so um, if that's like a capital gain or something, I don't know that, you know, if that, the idea behind the CPC is to make sure that we're giving small businesses money to get folks um, on the payroll. We have a couple of more minutes. If anybody has some last minute questions they would like to ask, please use the chat. As a business, are we required to remain open in order to have the loan forgiven? Uh, not necessarily. As long as you're paying your employees, that's really up to you. Um, we know that there are businesses that are not open, um, but if you choose to pay your employees while you're not open, then um, that's what this is for. Or if they may be sick, maybe you have an employee that's recovering from the virus or a, a sickness that could be used for sick pay as well. But to keep money, keep money flowing into the pockets of of our employees. For the payroll calculation, do they include taxes, expenses, and use gross amount paid? Um, we no, we won't include taxes. You're not going to get. There won't be a reimbursement for the taxes. Uh, we we can go back to what is considered a payroll expense. Okay, a payroll, the cost of payroll, salary, wages, commissions, or tips, employee benefits, including cost of vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance for separation or dismissal, um, payments required for the provisions of group health insurance or care, including insurance premiums and retirement benefits. Also includes state and local taxes assessed on compensation, which could be, I guess, unemployment or I'm not sure. Uh, and for, so th those are considered payroll costs. Now, if you don't bank with a lender, can you still go to that lender? Or can you switch between lenders? 
Yes, you 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 as a consumer can go to any lender um, that is an authorized SBA um, lender that's that's making the PPP loans. Does somebody uh, have to let go of one employee? Can they rehire them and still apply that employee to the PPP? Yes. It's encouraged. Now, somebody stating here that there are banks that have stopped taking applications due to the overwhelming response. Um, and they're asking for any comments. I know that you did state earlier that um, pretty soon there's gonna be opportunities for non-lenders to apply uh, to be able to distribute a loan for this program. Yes, and then also again, we can go back to the website. There's a website of those authorized lenders that are doing PPP and um, go to the website. I think you can put in your zip code and um, those lenders that are participating will pop up and then you're able to contact them um, you know or figure out who, who you like to approach So if a business um, let go of that employee, but they don't plan to rehire, that employee does not count for the PPP, correct? Correct. Well, I think a, a previous banking relationship is, is fine, um, but I do know that you know, some of the lenders are overwhelmed right now. So, um, you know, my my advice is to just keep trying with different different lenders. Um, if if you're not successful with your current lender, I'm hoping that if you have a great relationship with your current lender, that they'll they'll work with you. In order to apply an employee into the program um, and they're receiving unemployment, do they still apply or is it not um, applicable? I, I would, I can't, I wouldn't answer that question. I think that's a, a question for for the Texas Workforce Commission. Okay. <laughs> um, if, if, if they're working and they're collecting un, unemployment, I think there's a problem. I do know that in our previous webinar with the Workforce Solutions, um, that employees that have a cutback in hours could apply for unemployment uh, for those hours that they're not getting anymore. Um, but if you would like to contact the Texas Workforce um, Commission, I can give you that information as well uh, in the email. We have about two minutes left of if anybody wants to have some kind of uh, questions answered or if you need clarifications on something, please use the chat. Again, too, I don't want you to forget about, you know, there are other programs, um, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, um, and then the Advance, um, the SBA Debt Relief. So if you have a current, uh, loan, 7A loan, um, your payment will de be deferred um, for six months. Uh, we have a, also a bridge loan that can bridge up to 25,000, uh, which is a 50% guarantee to your lender. Um, so if you need sort of a bridge loan, there's that opportunity as well. Now, Jeff, uh, on your question, are you asking about this particular program if you're applying to two lenders, or are you talking about this program and the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan? What specifically um, do you want answered? 
You can only apply once for PPP. Now you can apply for both PPP and the economic injury disaster loan, but you can only apply once for with PPP. Again, if you have your payroll, if you have your employees on payroll, and if you're paying them, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to me where you're where they're working um, if they're teleworking or whatever it may be as long as they're on your payroll and you have documentation that they're on your payroll i want to thank everyone that joined us in this webinar and again angela thank you so much for giving us the time uh, to hear from you and the SBA on these programs. Um, again, to the attendees, uh, we will be sending you all the information and resources that we talked about during the webinar in an email that will be going out tomorrow. Um, and if you have any questions, you do have our email address or my personal email address, which is danielle at brownsellechamber.com or info at brownsellechamber.com. And um, we will be having a webinar on the CARES Act this Thursday at 2 p.m. And we'll be having uh, Jeff Lundgren, who's the Chief Healthcare and Immigration Lobbyist for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We'll be going over the specifics of the CARES Act and how it pertains to businesses in our uh, region. So if you'd like to join, um, we'll also be sending you that information as well. Now, I thank you all once again, and I hope you have a great day.